It was a toxic relationship. He had told me that they dated for three weeks in 2020. I was still open to us. He just was sort of saying some things about me to them. And multiple people telling me, Aaliyah, this is what you said and you deserve more. Once I started getting both sides of the story, I was like, something is not adding up here. Thank you so much for coming today to talk about your experience on Love is Blind. Obviously, it's a really intense experience, and I wanted to have this opportunity to give you the floor and basically hear more about your story, what wasn't shown, and just hear more about your story. So can you kind of start us off by just kind of giving us a sense of what it was like, like in the pods leading up to some of these bigger moments that we saw on screen. Like how how was your relationship with Uche um, as it was progressing? Like, how did you feel? Um, I'll say like leading up to those major big moments in our story and in our journey on the show, it was actually really pleasant talking to him. Yeah. Um, he's a really, really direct, blunt person. I mean, he, he kind of leads with that. And yeah. um, I think that that shows that he he's pretty self-aware. Like he knows he can maybe come off a bit harsh or yeah. you know, very direct <laughs> personality. Um, and he's also a lawyer. I think people have to realize like he his career and his profession probably contributes to like a bit of those like personality traits that he that he has. Um, but it was very nice. I felt like I was in high school again, dating, yeah. spending hours on hours upon hours on the phone, talking to my crush. Um, I felt like it was safe to be mushy and to be expressive. And I felt like Uche was very vulnerable with me. And that wasn't something that was usual for him, you know, with the type of personality that he leads with. Yeah. I could tell that, um, he was even enjoying being a bit more emotional and being vulnerable with me. And I appreciated that. And that made me feel like, oh, he he is really putting effort towards our relationship and this bond yeah. and this emotional connection. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that about being vulnerable. They're so scared of it. But once you embrace it, it's actually really rewarding to connect right. like that and be able to be so open about yourself. It was refreshing. I enjoyed it. Like I, I really, I mean, I've said it before, but it was so exhilarating being in that environment. It's a unique way to find love. And, yeah. um, and it's a little unorthodox and people may even say it's a little crazy, but um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the way dating is now, it's kind of like, okay, um, I'm pretty much open to anything at the yeah, moment. it's worth a shot at this point. It's right? worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and can you kind of speak to like how you're able to fall in love so fast? I've talked about it a lot in the past, but would love to hear your perspective. It's you know what it is? It's the it's the choice to to be open to falling in love. And yeah. it's the fact that you're in an environment that is focused on falling in love. You you're removing all the distractions, um, family, friends, opinions of others, career, work, the internet, um, social media, dating apps, like you're removing all these distractions and your soul, you know, goal and purpose of being here is to find somebody and to connect with somebody. And I think because you're actually working towards that pretty much 24 seven while you're in this experiment, it allows you to open up to that idea. And yeah. it was really easy for me because I was like, you know what, I, I want to, number one, I, I want to be with somebody, I wanna get married. I want to be open and fall in love with somebody. And I think it's really just a daily choice because even when you're in a relationship or married, you have to wake up every day and choose to love that person the same way you you did the day before and when you made your vows. So I feel like it was sort of that mindset that you lead with that can kind of make it easy to fall in love. I think that's such an important point that it is a choice and it's not it's not necessarily an easy choice all the time either, because it does take conscious effort. You have to be willing to continue the conversation with the other person to be vulnerable and just making that decision. A lot of people, I think, act out of fear yeah. to not do that or a little bit of it, maybe just knowing that it takes a lot of effort to do that. They right. Want, like the path of least resistance almost. Right. Right. I yeah. agree. 
it can be really scary. And knowing that this process is so expedited, you do, you know, you'll have those moments where you're like, oh, should I be this open? Should I be yes. so vulnerable? This yeah. But um, I mean, there wasn't a moment prior to that first conversation where we sort of hit our first challenge and you know I started having doubts he started having doubts that I felt like you know no I shouldn't be with him I, I felt safe too and and not to say we didn't have discussions where we didn't agree you know because yeah. we do have difference of opinions on things it wasn't like a hundred percent you know everything that we had experienced or talked about we were totally in a line but we right. realized that there were there were things that we could work through and I remember um one of those uh was contraception like you know okay. if we were to get married you know would would we want to um would you want to use birth control would we, what form of protection would we want to use when would we want to have kids and how are we going to kind of stick to that plan of we want to wait this many years so that yeah. was one of the more serious conversations that we had days leading up to um some of those heavy moments um, where we were like, okay, we're gonna have to work through this because I have this opinion, you have this opinion. You yeah. Know? So. <laughs> Did you feel like you kind of met a resolution at that point, or it was just something? It was like an ongoing discussion. It would have had to have been like an ongoing discussion, yeah. and, but we yeah. were both open to that. Like, okay, we'll yeah. we'll talk about this more as time goes on. Okay. And I think that that again also showed on both sides that we were willing to compromise. Okay. We had talked about um, childhood traumas and things we weren't proud of that we had done as kids, yeah. as teenagers. Um, some of our family dynamics, marriage, yeah. divorce. Um, and, and I felt like, you know, it was a safe space and, and even like, you know, as Uche is asking me, you know, have you, have you had moments of dishonesty? Have you, have you cheated before? You can tell me, yeah. you can be honest. I felt like it was okay to be honest. And that's obviously one of the bigger moments that we see on the show. Can you give us more context about this? And I, and I want to say, first of all, you know, I really appreciate your vulnerability, your honesty here, because that's obviously not something that's easy to talk about, to admit to. The fact that you talked about it and were open to it, where a lot of people, they may have just said, no, I, I've never been unfaithful. You know, I'm, I'm good. Um, so can you give us like more insight or context? That relationship that I was in, it was, it was a real, I was young in my early mid 20s. Um, and I had been friends with this individual for some time before we became a couple. Um, we were both transitioning in our lives from being college students to going into our profession. So me being a nurse and him in his respected field, studying yeah. for licenses and just, you know, trying to get our feet off the ground. And yeah. um, I think, you know, we we were young and a bit emotionally immature on both sides. You know, I was on the receiving end of infidelity as well in the relationship. But in the moment when I was explaining all of this to Uche, I really didn't want to focus on, well, this happened and then this happened and then this happened. Like I yeah. didn't want to kind of go through the, the jab for jabs. It was a toxic relationship. And I think a lot of people can relate to being young, not having the emotional maturity or even the coping skills, the communication skills to be able to work through the difficulties. Like we just didn't know how. And I think yeah. our intentions were good, but we didn't understand that deep down we weren't truly compatible as a couple. Yeah. Um, you know, love languages weren't being fulfilled on both sides. And um I think we did our best to try to work through the difficulty, but there was just a lot of things that we could not come to a resolution on. And it was, it was tough. Like we both struggled with, with letting one another go, even though we, there were obvious signs that we weren't fulfilled as a, as a unit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't want to use that moment to to go into that great detail. I wanted to hold myself accountable for my mistake in that relationship. And, yeah. and, and for, I really was hoping that the conversation would evolve into me talking about 
the fact that I went into therapy after that relationship, that I had read like a ton of self-help books and emotional intelligence, EQ um, yeah. 2.0. Like that's one of my favorites that I read about narcissism and attachment styles and just different things because I wasn't, I wasn't educated on this stuff. And it was something that I really needed to take time to learn before going into another yeah. relationship. I realized like I did have a lot of things and a lot of issues on my end that weren't healthy and I wanted to work on myself. And that's why it was really hurtful. And I felt so judged by Uche because I didn't really get yeah. a chance to really dive deeper because yeah. I felt like my, I felt myself shutting down just based yeah. off the phone. But, you know, in the moment I tried to be empathetic to the fact that, yes, this man is scared now, you know, he, yeah. this, this is, this is a concerning conversation. This is a, a concerning revelation for him. That is totally fair, you know, and I wanted yeah. to validate his feelings because as a woman, I think, or anybody um, hearing that and you know you're pursuing marriage you you would you would be a little scared or a lot scared yeah. I mean depending on your past experiences as well as a person yeah. you're going to be concerned and that's that's okay like I've never discredited the fact that he was scared yeah and that was something that I pointed out in my last YouTube was it did seem like he was acting out of fear of right. course he obviously came on to you very strong with the inquisition. So me bringing that up in the video was just to point out that clearly this was coming from a place of fear, not to say that he wasn't uh, being judgmental necessarily. Cause right. yeah, that's, I, I know a lot of people in the comments were like, Oh, I think he's so judgmental. So after right. that point, I mean, we see on the show that Uche seems to take a beat and kind of reflect on it a little bit and then we see you two together again right it seems like you've kind of there's there's efforts to kind of move forward with it so like how are you feeling at that point with everything going into that conversation I was so oh my god I was nervous <laughs> because I mean even on my end you know people are like oh you were so emotional and you slid down the wall I'm like well I mean the conversation <laughs> was so it was so tough to have in the yeah. first place. And, you know, I just, I think I was holding back so much it, during the conversation that when I walked out, I was just like, oh, like I just had to sit down for a second. It really was a moment where I was like, I need to process everything that just happened because. I don't know if I'll feel safe to share anything with him again. Yeah. And I don't know if he'll be able to overcome this. I mean, there were a lot of thoughts going through my head. So when we went back yeah. into the pod to talk again, I was kind of like, you know, where are you at emotionally with this? Because I don't want to feel like we don't have the openness and transparency, especially going into a marriage. But I also, you know, I don't want you to feel as if you can't trust me because I would never give you the reason not to. I, I've yeah. truly learned from this. So by the time we got through our conversation, everything felt at ease. Okay. Um, and I think we both had understanding of like where the other was coming from and how we both felt in the moment. And we both apologized and moved forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think yeah. that's a part of, of a relationship with anybody. You're going to go through things and have challenges. You have to be able to compromise with people. It's not going to be perfect. <laughs> no, obviously not. Yeah. No, no. So did it, is it fair to say at that point after you'd had that discussion that you felt like you were ready to get engaged? Um, yeah, I mean, I was still willing because yeah. for me, I was like, let's work through it. We can work through it. That was yeah. my mindset. I was trying to be optimistic about it. And, um, you know, I feel like I'll have moments where I may act out of fear, too. So I didn't yeah. want to judge Uche for acting out of fear. I mean, he's human. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, you know what? I let, Let's move forward. Let's continue on. That's fair. I think that's really fair. And yeah, I think in a marriage, obviously... A lot of people, especially looking at like marriages on social media, right. you know that we, we get this a lot that people think they see like the happy pictures and they think like, oh yeah, it's just like perfect sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> but it's it's really a lot of hard work every day. You know, I mean, we've been married for five years. There's been a lot of uncomfortable conversations, a lot of, you know, times where we didn't see eye to eye. 
Right. And, you know, the obvious easy thing to do is be like, oh, yeah, like it just not going to work. Yeah. Like on to the not on to the next one, obviously, but um, but to kind of throw in the towel. Um, so I, you know, I commend you too for working through that, especially in this it's such a stressful environment. And it's hard to emphasize enough how stressful the pods can be. People are so emotionally invested. They're like, oh my God, they're falling in love. And it's like, yeah. oh, we're still people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like we're enjoying it, but it's this is it's the same as any other relationship. We're gonna have some challenges. Like it's hard to it's so it's different, but it's still a relationship that we're building, you know. We're we're being courageous to share it with you all, but it's it's still, <laughs> you know, it's a oh, journey. Yeah. <laughs> it takes so much courage to share yeah absolutely and you know to think that it's going to just go like super smoothly the entire time and in, in the pods or outside the pods like it's just not realistic right right <laughs> it's, not, it's not realistic one of the biggest things to talk about is this big reveal about <laughs> you already know what i'm gonna say lydia yeah. and uche I mean, I don't even really know where to begin with this because I, you know, I watched episodes four through seven last night, like I said, and I'm like more confused than ever. With, right. Like their relationship, the fact right. that like they didn't tell you until what seemed like almost up until the proposal day. Right. Watching the show. Where would you start with this? Like yeah. helping us understand it all. You know, Cameron, it's it's really it was really difficult, like, you know, taking myself back to that actual time in that moment. Um, I was so confused. I was yeah. so confused because, you know, obviously you guys see the conversation that took place between both. I mean, not the full conversation, because, look, these are okay. episodes. You only have so much time to tell our stories. So, yeah, please keep that in mind. But at the same time, you know. You, you see Lydia telling me, you know, this is what took place in the pod. This is what our, what our history is. And this is what has transpired in recent months. And with Uche, you know, he had told me that they dated for three weeks in 2020. Yeah. That, and that was it. Like, so yeah. I'm, that's why I'm so, when I first talked to Uche, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, we could get past this. We can work yeah. through this. This is big news, but we can work through this. This isn't as, as deep as, you know, I was thinking when you first said it, you know, when you when yeah. you first came out of your mouth, I was like, you know, but um, three weeks, 2020, you know, you, you didn't make it past a certain point. Okay, maybe we can work right. through this. Maybe if both people are emotionally detached, you weren't engaged, you weren't, you know, leading towards those things. I can, yeah. I can understand this. Sure. It's a big city, but it's also very small. <laughs> so yeah. this could Atlanta happen. the same way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this could happen. I was yeah. trying to be open, um, but I will say once I started getting both sides of the story and putting pieces together, I was like, something is not adding up here. No. Um, something is no. not adding up. And that's truly how I felt. I was like, I don't know if, you know, this is a coincidence that you were both here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, you know, maybe you told her, hey, I'm, you know, I'm not interested anymore. Maybe she wasn't ready to let you go. I don't know. And I think that me having these thoughts, totally fair, because it's just weird to me that, you know, you, even if production says, hey, don't say this, the way I am wired as a person, I'm going to keep it real. If I really care about you, I'm going to keep it real with you. Hey, this is what it is. And, and what a lot of people don't see is, Three days prior to him telling me about him and Lydia's past, I I told him Lydia was my closest friend. Yeah. We had a full conversation about she and I and how we became close, the experiences from our childhood and our families and everything that we shared with one another. And that yeah. we decided to be each other's genuine friend because Lydia is from another country. She's still fairly new to the Houston area. She didn't have any friends. She felt like that were truly dependable. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I can, I'm, let's, let's begin a friendship. Let's start that. Like yeah. I can be a, a dependable friend to you. So I'm sharing this with him and he didn't reveal the truth. And I felt like that would have been the appropriate moment to say, you know what? I, I have to tell you this now that didn't happen. 
And also same with her, you know, when I'm talking to her and sharing these things with her, you know, about five days in, I started being more open with the girls about my connection with Uche because I kept it kind of close to myself. I didn't want to <laughs> really yeah. share my, my connection with everyone. Yeah. And I like that would have been the moment to say, look, you know, we have been building this friendship. This is, this is the truth. And I just want you to know this. And that I could have, I could have um, navigated things appropriately due to the fact that I had the, the facts. Um, you know, after leaving the show, Uche and I did have a conversation. It was a bit, it was a bit rocky because he was so angry yeah. about me leaving. And that was totally understandable. He was blindsided. But at the same time, I felt like he didn't quite understand like where I was, how right. hard it was for me. And I didn't have enough time to really process everything and get all the answers because I didn't want to go into an engagement that doubtful. I just did it. Yeah, especially with the blind side that you receive like right at the last moment, right? Right. And a couple things. One is what time are we talking? What year, what year was it when y'all filmed? We filmed in 2022, early 2022. Okay. Pretty much, I, I believe around the same time season four was filmed. So it was 2022. He has said that they had dated in 2020. Right. But then you later learned that they had slept together like three months ago, basically. Right. right. So it was pretty recent. Right. Uh, and I'm like, that's not what I was told. <laughs> yeah. So I, I could see your reservation. Like, I feel like I would have had very similar thoughts. You know, you're in the living quarters, this other person that was dating, the person that you want to get engaged to, and they're both kind of hiding this information from you intentionally. Right. And I know they both kind of gave their own rationale of like they didn't want it to interfere or whatever. But I think it's an interesting contrast between you being so open about the infidelity. Right. And then them not wanting to be open with you about their relationship that was very recent. I mean, all right. things considered. Right. It was yeah. um, it was really tough for me to process that. But I will say in the moment, you know, I didn't go back to like when he revealed Lydia and I this history, I didn't go back to, well, I was honest with you. Not not yeah. initially. Not initially. You know, yeah. eventually I did because I was so upset about it. You know, the the more facts that kept coming out about their relationship and their history and the things that had happened, I said, Why didn't you share this with me? You know, I yeah. felt like it would have been more appropriate for you to share because that would have shown you had my best interest and my back in this in this situation and in building our foundation as a married couple. You yeah. know, you need to feel like you're going to look out for me in the end because I would have dodged certain certain conversations or interactions with Lydia if yeah. I had known more of the of the pieces of that puzzle, you know, because he kind of led with, well, Lydia's trustworthy. She's this, she's that. Yeah. And then I come to find out later that there was there was not this was not a smooth dating situation between she and him and that there were a lot of conflicts that they had endured. So it was just like, no, I, I feel like you should have been a, a bit more open and real about this so that yeah. I could have been, a, you know, guarded or protected yeah. myself and our relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the fact that you opened up to Lydia about whatever was going on in your life, you were vulnerable with her, you were vulnerable with him, and they both kind of kept this and then when we see Lydia talking to you and like, then she just opens up, she opens the floodgates about like her and Uche's relationship. You were like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. And she just like, let it come out. That was hard to watch. Right. Like, right. Because I, I set the boundaries. I'm like, ma'am, <laughs> I said, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and she's just like plowed through. She's just like, nope, you're going to hear it. God. Yeah. Yeah, it was so, tough. <laughs> you have this like phone call while he's doing his confessional. He came on really strong on that call. Yeah. Very aggressive, I would say. It was uh, hurtful. <laughs> yeah, it was it was aggressive. And of course, he was coming from a place from hurt of hurt, but he was still very aggressive on the call. Um yeah. were you at this point thinking things could be mended or how are you feeling at this time? Yeah, I mean, Cameron, when I left, I didn't think that my relationship with him was over. 
I really okay. didn't. My goal was to say, you know what, let's remove all of this like external drama. And yeah. if our connection is is so authentic and solid, we can continue our journey apart from this, or maybe yeah. we can figure something out and come back later. Like yeah. I was still open to us. I, I yeah. had to shut myself off from us. And I know people are going to kind of come for me for saying that, but I, I genuinely fell in love with him. Okay. So yes. if I'm falling in love with somebody. I'm not going to just give up on my relationship that easily. I'm going to do my part to try to fight for it. Now, once thing, more things came to the surface, my, my mentality towards our relationship changed as well. But at that point, I was still open to Uche and Aaliyah. <laughs> And I think you bring up something that's super important and that's this notion during the pods, during the live experience that like you can only have a relationship during this experience in the pods. And like, if you decide not to do it in the pods, you can't do it outside of it. I mean, right. producers put this idea into your mind and the cast kind of co-signs on the idea mm -hmm. together. Um, but I mean, really, there's nothing to say that you couldn't do it outside of it. And and obviously, the pods and the experiment bring so much pressure onto a relationship to make these big decisions under a timeline. Right. So, yeah, I can I can definitely see like your perspective of maybe like, let's see where our relationship might go outside of the pods and, and right. this whole experiment. Yeah. Right. And then leading into... The, the lunch that y'all had how how big of a time jump was that between like that conversation y'all had on the phone to when we see you at lunch I can't even to be honest I think it was about a week maybe. okay so know. not too much time had passed really no not too much time had passed I mean it was about a week and a half I believe and um I was nervous going into that conversation and I'll yeah. say the only reason I was nervous was because one, my, my emotions are really all over the place, but um, also just the call and just yeah. knowing how he can be when he is leading with fear or, you know, it. I was like, I don't know how much more I can take of that side yeah, of him. Yeah. And I, I was nervous about going back on camera. I was just kind of like, man, I, like, I try my best to be patient and like really try to to step outside my own perspective with a lot of this, but I'm really tired of like, sort of feeling like I was being emotionally beat up in yeah. a way. Um, and I just, I was nervous about that. I really was. And, you know, there was a point even after I left the show and we had that phone call that I actually like blocked communication from him for a day. Yeah. I was like, I can't receive any like angry, any more anger. Like yeah. I, I I need you to calm down and be able to receive my words as well. I can't just take, 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 or, you know, I can't just take it and take it. I need you to calm down first, then we can talk. <laughs> you don't often need a lot of time to figure, <laughs> figure out if it's not going to work, right? Right. <laughs> uh, gosh. And that seemed to be what, at least from my perception, like you left the show almost to maybe let things cool down a little bit. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think there's an important distinction too to draw between, you know, you have a difficult conversation or a difficult hurdle in the relationship you need to work through. And then that person being aggressive or not being able to really communicate in a productive way, which it kind of seemed like how things were at the time. Right. Uh, right. Between y'all. So I mean, I get being fearful when you see yourself with someone and, you know, he says on the show that he had seen you as a fiance, as a future wife, and then for you to leave, like, that was really tough. I, I do understand that. But there's also a, a means of, you know, how do you express that? How, you know, obviously, if you're coming coming in hot to a conversation, it's hard for the other person to be receptive to that. Right, right. And um, again, like I was trying to, I wanted to do things differently. I really did. Um, I've had my moments of being, uh, you know, just truly emotional in conversations yeah. like that before. I just did not want to lead with that. I was really trying to be logical about it at that point. Um, 
And I just, I did, I felt like I wasn't considered a lot of the time and from mm-hmm. both sides, like from his side, from Lydia's side, just yeah. consideration. Um, and it was, it was just really tough, but I, even when we had our sit down, I was, I was like, okay, maybe we can work towards engagement and marriage in the future. Yeah. You know, maybe we can work this out. Um, and we agreed to try to date outside of the show. We yeah. attempted to, but it just, it didn't work out. And yeah. there were a lot of like, there are a lot of reasons for that, that I'll probably, okay. probably wait to touch on, but sure. it was just, we tried. How long was that kind of period of trying things out? About a month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to push too hard on this topic, but what was kind of the realization where you felt like, okay, this isn't going to work? They had been told by some of the other cast members that he was really, um, he just was sort of saying some things about me to them and there mm. I guess they had like a group chat. I don't know. Never seen it, but just multiple people telling me, Aaliyah, you this is what you said and you deserve more. You're a great person. You're real. Um you're a great woman. And yeah. I feel like, you know, you shouldn't have to chase after somebody you, you know what you need to do you know yeah. and this is by multiple people I I also was feeling it you know I I did try to ask him like what is it that you know I thought I thought we had this connection and this you know what what is it you know he yeah. just he I don't think yeah. he was open to it and I I'm gonna be honest I think that he wasn't truly a attracted to me as well really um, he mentioned that I wasn't his type his ideal type yeah. um and yeah, that was kind of hurtful too because yeah. you know, I was kind of like I don't I didn't care how he looked. I even said yeah. <laughs> I even said in my interviews like I thought he was short, stocky, nerdy, you know, glassy. Yeah. I still would have been in love. I still yeah. So it was a little hurtful, but I think yeah. it kind of gave me enough to be like it's time to move on. Let's heal. Let's let's move forward in life. Things didn't work out with Uche, which obviously is okay. Did you ever get some sort of like final clarity with the whole Uche Lydia thing? Because even during that like luncheon, like it, it got even more confusing, at least to me. And right. he's saying that she's like stalking him or whatever. Meanwhile, on the show, we're seeing like her and Milton like having like a great time. So yeah. it's like we're getting like all these like conflicting messages. Whenever he and I talked about this following my um, abrupt exit, um, yeah. he did he did try to show me some evidence of things that had taken place, like yeah. messages and just different things he tried to show me. Um, and I, I took it for what it was because I'm like, well, there's still a whole other side to this. Um, I be- I'm not saying I didn't believe him. I did. I I took his story and I said, okay, thank you for that. Um, yeah. But for obvious reasons, I had my trust issues with him. Um, and then, you know, as far as Lydia goes, eventually I did have a conversation with her. Um, one of the other girls from the cast kind of created a situation to where we could talk. She did reveal some things to me. Um, I'm not sure I want to like share it because yeah. it's more hurt. Experience and there are some pretty private things there so I feel like I'm gonna allow her to tell that if she wants to hopefully she will because I think the truth will set everyone free in this situation <laughs> um okay. but yeah I have I've had talks with both and they basically I mean to me it seems like there's there's truth to both stories okay. right? there's yeah. truth to both stories um and then there's the truth in the middle there somewhere yeah. I think that there was some resistance to in the relationship on her end. But I also think like, you know, she she was maybe a bit um, confused as to why, because there have been this on and off thing for two years between. Yeah. Them. yeah. And so I, I that's why I say a lot of the time I'm like woman to woman. You know, me having stated earlier, I've been in a toxic relationship before. I think that, you know, there was there were reasons on her side and on her end to do what she did. And yeah. um, 
I just, I don't know all of the, the facts because even based off of the stories that they told me, Cameron, I don't even know if that's everything. I think, I don't know if we'll, we'll ever get everything. No, you it know? doesn't seem like that. I don't think we will, but I do think that there's truth to both their stories. <laughs> I that's do. fair. That's fair. I really do. Me being in, in the more healed place, like I'm still a work in progress, but I, I'm just like, honey, if, if a man says he doesn't want you anymore, okay. Then, then that's not your man. That's not your husband. That's not your person. Move on. There's somebody else that's going to cherish yeah. you. I think that's a great point. Yeah. I think, if, you know, yeah, you shouldn't have to like convince someone to want to be in a relationship with you. Right. You know, it's, it's one thing to work through arguments with someone, but it's a different when they're like, hey, I don't think we should be together. And you're like, hey, yeah. we should. And, and here's the reasons why. Right, um, right. Yeah, right. So it's a different story. Taking all this, kind of like setting it to the side, because obviously for you, this was some time ago now. It sounds like right. you filmed in 2022. It's 2023, almost 2024. I mean, where are you at now with mm -hmm. everything? Are you happy? Like, Yeah, I mean, life is good. I am, I am really at peace with it. It took me a long time to get there, though. I am thriving. I am pursuing passions with music and songwriting and doing all these different things that truly bring me that fulfillment. And so I, I really am like, I'm so happy. I'm in a good place. I've forgiven both of them for everything. Hopefully, yeah. you know, um, I, f I hope they're at peace and I feel that they are, but um, yeah, I am for sure. And yeah. I will just say, you know, I feel like, there's a lesson to be taken from this for everybody. I just hope that the women and the men take the lesson from this entire situation and just apply that to their lives. And and honestly, just leave with grace because everyone does things that they're not proud of. I think that's sure. important too. Absolutely. And I think also there's always more understanding that could be had. Like we all have our reactionary responses to what someone tells us, what someone does. Right. But oftentimes I feel like when you understand the person better, you understand what was the origin of their actions, their words, and it, and it's it draws less, less of a reaction or you're able to talk about it in a way that's not so inflammatory, let's say. Right, yeah. right, I agree. I totally yeah. agree. Um, you know, the big thing for me going into this show too, and I just want to say this was like, you know, I wanted to be confident in my decision. Um, yeah. I didn't want to be stuck between multiple people. I wanted to go into that knowing this is it. I feel it. It's visceral. Like I'm at peace with who I am choosing to move forward with in an engagement and in a marriage. And I just, I really wanted to feel that confidence and that security in the relationship. And I don't think it's anyone's place to judge anyone who chooses to say they didn't feel that enough to no. move forward or, you know, to even say, no, I don't want to get engaged or I don't want to get married. I mean, it's a big choice and it's a big life choice. Yeah. 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 That's such a, a, another great point because the show is kind of conditioned both the cast and the viewers to expect a lot of proposals, a lot of engagements, which, right. <laughs> you know, there's 30 people ultimately doing the show at once. And when you see five couples emerge, I mean, that's, that's quite a lot. I mean, right. 30, 33% basically. Right. Uh, <laughs> which I think is actually, these, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. That's, that's a, a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the odds of like, just getting 30 random people together on any other circumstance, um, right. you're not going to see that many engagements. Right, right. But, you know, the, the show, they do a lot of hard casting. They create this very specific focused environment that allows those bonds to catalyze. Mm -hmm. So there's reasons that it happens. But I think to what you were saying, you don't have to walk out of there engaged. You really right. don't. And you you shouldn't force it. I I really, I know you saw my video. You really, it, it bothers me when people do the double backs and go right. to, that was their second choice. <laughs> like you, you really don't have to do that. You yeah. can walk yeah. out of there single. 
Right. And I think that's important. Like for me, I was like, look, <laughs> if I don't feel it for you and, and you have to question whether it's me or someone else, then I don't want you to pick me. I want you yeah. to be certain that it's me from, you know, pretty early on. Like I want you to yes. have felt that instant energy and chemistry the way I know I'm feeling it. And I don't want to have to feel like I have to compete or no. um, feel f pressured to to move forward because this is a TV show or this is an experiment that I want to win or, you know, I don't know, you know, because I don't know everyone's mentality coming into this. All I can do is speak to mine, but Good. for me, it was about feeling confident in my decision. You know what yeah. I mean? And I wanted it to be one person. And I felt that with Uche. That's one thing that I can honestly say from the beginning. I knew that he was my strongest connection. And that that was who I was likely to leave with. And if I wasn't going to leave there with him, it wasn't going to be anybody else. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, very well said. And and I, I hope that's something that the audience picks up on that they can really like internalize and also future casts. Like, please yeah. do not feel pressured to get engaged just in general but certainly like if the person you're connecting with like I, I I know I've said this but I just can't understand being that torn between two people where you could say yeah I could get engaged to, to both. this yeah. person or to that person you know being torn yeah. I can't okay. even because I'm like such a like once I'm all in for somebody I'm all in for that person yeah. like yeah. I cannot I can't split my heart like that, so especially no. marriage, because I take that so seriously. Like I've never been married. I only want one. That's a sacred moment and and an experience in life. It's the biggest decision you'll make. I I don't I want to feel like that is my person, you know, yeah. this one person. So I get I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I really do. Yeah, very well said. Is there anything else that you really want to convey about either your story or just what you feel like people should know in general maybe about the lib experience or, or your experience in particular um I just I feel like a lot of <laughs> I think like a lot of people are again you know we talked about how can you fall in love so fast and I think yeah. some people are questioning like how could Aaliyah and Lydia have built a friendship like that so soon mm -hmm. um and I think people have to realize, like, you know, we we had these experiences, our life experiences and our past. And I spoke on it on the show, how we both had shared stories about women not being genuine friends to us before. Yeah. And so um, I think people need to, I don't know if it's because in the world, we just see so much hate, you know, we don't yeah. see people being open to loving one another as much. Um, but that's truly like a lifestyle of mine. I, I have chosen to lead with love years ago prior to ever thinking I would be on this show. And I don't think just because I'm on a show like this, that I should change my approach to relationships and friendships. And I felt the capacity to be that way with her because I could see that she was someone who really wanted that a friend, um, and I was willing to do that. And I don't regret that. You know, I think yeah. a lot of people are like, well, you, you shouldn't trust her. And I mean, knowing everything I know now, I think I've made an educated decision <laughs> and I'm fine not having a close friendship with her. I'm OK with that. But I just think people are like, well, how can you create this bond so fast? Well, how do you think we, we're, we're getting these married couples so fast? Yeah. As well? You know, when you're open to something like that, it can develop. And I think people need to just be a bit more open about that idea. Yeah. Um, you know, just because it's a reality TV show, does it? It's not scripted. We're not acting. Um, <laughs> we're just people, you know. <laughs> and um, it's it's things that you see on the show are real. There are oh, real yeah. emotions, real bonds, real friendships, and real love connections being formed. So. Yes. Just be open to that. It's not all romantic connections. There are platonic and friendships that are, are created from this experience. And I'm really grateful for those. I, I did, even though Lydia is not one, I did gain some friendships from this. And I'm really yeah. grateful for those friendships. Absolutely. And the intensity of the experience too. Right. You know, brings people together. I think it's fair to say. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm happy to hear that you have some friendships that emerged from this too. And the thing I like the most about the show is the people, the right. cast. You right. know, the show is what it is. It's it to me. It's a vehicle for letting us see these individuals and see how they come into it, how they mm-hmm. emerge from it. Um, and so it's a wonderful thing for me to see, like the cast, to connect with you, mm-hmm. and and hear more about your story and and get these deeper insights. Like I re- I really appreciate getting to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for even just providing me this um this opportunity and and allowing me to do this too because i feel i actually feel a lot better now that i have kind of talked about this a little bit yeah. you know i'll be honest i really don't plan to do too much more of this this talking about it like i i really want to move forward and kind of like focus on the now and um the future but i was i, I felt like people at least could hear a little bit more insight on all of this from my perspective and you know, hopefully it answers a lot of people's questions. I think it will. I think you really gave some some really great insights. So I hope the audience really appreciates that. And yeah, I, I certainly really appreciate it. So thank you again for, you. for talking to me. Yeah. Of course. And I hope to possibly meet you guys soon, maybe. Yeah. When are you coming to Atlanta? I actually come there at least once a year. So okay. I'll be sure to reach out when I do. Come yes. <laughs> yeah. Lauren and I, we the three of us can get dinner or something like that. That would be great. Sounds great. I can't wait. Thank Perfect. you. Jason. Thank you, Leah. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Talk to you Bye. soon. Bye. Bye.